So in short, CPS 230 is all about operational resiliency, right? What we have to ensure is that we have effective operational risk management, even when a service is being provided by a service provider, aka a vendor. We will probably refer to service providers as vendors. CPS 230 requires teams to identify, assess, and manage risks that result from inadequate or failed internal processes, system, actions, inactions, emissions, or people or external drivers and events. And this includes your vendors, right? Because if you are outsourcing, working with them, and they have these kind of weaknesses within the, their processes or ways of working that, that impact you, you need to make sure that you are remediating, you are solving those challenges with your vendors in a timely manner to remain compliant. So this automatically means that our attention should be focused on bringing on board vendors that are CPS 230 compliant. So that's going to shape our thinking there as well. Now, teams must also have in place a system to manage contracts across their entire life cycle. So already we've got two distinct challenges. We need to bring vendors on board that are going to be compliant, that have really stringent, really well thought out risk management processes when it comes to operational risks. Then we need to embed this into the contracts. We need to have a clear method of storing contracts, reviewing contracts, approving, signing contracts, and then monitoring that entire life cycle of the vendor and the contracts performance. So this is where we start to bring in vendor contract lifecycle management. And that's a VCLM approach that we at Gatekeeper have kind of coined and we're pioneering. And this is where you bring vendor lifecycle contract lifecycle and third party risk management together to manage your entire vendor base, their contracts and risks. So for me, when I look at CPS 230, I see it as the perfect fit for that BCLM approach. So here's a complete list of requirements that you need to deal with when it comes to your vendors. So contracts with service providers must include mandatory clauses related to risk management, contingency plans, and security measures. ARPA regulated entities must not rely on a service provider unless they can ensure compliance with their prudential obligations and manage associated risks effectively. Detailed vendor reporting is required with a focus on incident management and third party risk management. Entities must develop governance arrangements for the oversight of operational and processes for the management of service provider arrangements aka the contracts with your vendors. Existing contracts with service providers must meet these requirements from the renewal date or by the 1st of July 2026, whatever comes first. So that's quite an onerous uh, requirement if you've got renewals coming up in the next year or two, right? Like before that deadline, we, we really need to get on top of these. A clear and complete description of services, service level descriptions, and data protection provisions must be included in contracts. Now, a lot of people are doing this already, but I think it's just bringing that assurance to all of your contracts. So there's a, there is a challenge there for sure. Entities must also maintain a register of information on their ICT contract and distinguish between those supporting critical functions and those that do not. And of course, like the consequences of non-compliance, typical of any regulation, right? That you may get independent reviews, audits, you'll have to build remediation programs, you need to have additional capital at times, you may have restrictions imposed on your license to operate, and then effectively you know, whatever the regulator uh, requires of you. And ultimately your board within your organization is going to be responsible and accountable for all of this, right? Of course they can delegate work, but the accountability comes back to your board members. So there's a lot to do here. So when we talk about contract compliance, CPS 230, for all of your existing vendors and the contracts you have there, you're gonna have to check effectively all of your contracts with them. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got a complete and clear description of services, service level descriptions, and all of those data protection provisions. Typically these will be in you know, maybe a, a services agreement, a master services agreement, a schedule of work, statement of work, data protection addendums, agreements, things like that. And the way we like to do it at Gatekeepers, we can separate those agreements and store them individually under a vendor 
so that we can see like the, the master services agreement, you've got the data protection agreement, you've got the schedule of work, statement of work, whatever it is, right? And we can actually use AI to search through all of these and make sure that we're, we're happy with it. Or of course, we can just do a manual like scroll through the contract and have a look. So we're all good there. And then we need to look at specific clauses and provisions. So we've got risk management provisions, contingency plans, and their management, security measures, and audit requirements. And all of these, you know, from my experience, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of vendor contracts, been responsible for contract management in defense and fintech and other places, you know, most of us are already doing these kind of things with our contracts, but we need a way to make sure that we definitely got it. So within Gatekeeper, we can just, like I said, use the AI to search it, or we could create some custom data points, sort of a, a CPS 230 compliant checklist for a contract. If we are happy that every contract, as we review them and go through them, has that, we can just say, yeah, fully compliant, partially compliant, non-compliant, right? And that's important because what we want to do for any that are only partially or non-compliant is we want to bring them onto a contract amendment or a contract variation workflow, right? And we'll use that data point to trigger, to push all of those contracts onto there and we'll start renegotiating with all of our vendors. So that's a really good way to do this. And then you know, for any new vendor contracts that we're bringing on board, we can simply use those data points as we're reviewing the contract on the contract review workflow. So these are all digital workflows. These are all best practice workflows that come out of the box with Gatekeeper, take seconds, minutes to set up. I love them, helped create them. They're really useful. And we can just do those compliance checks as we go along. So it's, a, it's fairly easy for your new contracts as long as you know what you're looking for. And it may be useful to have a contracts playbook you know, that you use alongside all of your contract reviews to be like, hey, we need these you know, six parts all included in this contract for CPS 230 compliance. And another little feature here is after we've done all of this review process across our vendor contracts, we can just go into our contract repository, check all of the compliance status of every applicable contract and figure out how many contracts we have that are compliant, partially compliant, non-compliant. That's really going to allow us to create a strategy for how we approach all of that non-compliance, partial compliance issues and which ones we're going to focus on first. Now, we need to make sure all of our vendors have very stringent approaches to risk management. And the easiest way to do that is when we're onboarding new vendors, carrying out effective due diligence. And we're gonna to have to do this on every vendor and you can use a best practice vendor onboarding workflow to do this. And what we might just need to create is a set of questions specific to CPS 230 to cover our compliance requirements. And ultimately that's really going to differ slightly to your organization, right? Your specific needs and requirements. I wouldn't be surprised if you're already asking for certain insights, right? Around their risk management processes, how they deal with incident management, how they deal with business continuity, disaster recovery, where data is stored, all of those kind of questions. You're probably already asking a lot of them. You may need to like reshape, reword slightly, just make them a little bit stronger in, in, in the approach that you're taking. But ultimately, it's probably going to be an iteration here rather than doing something completely new. Whereas on the contracting, I'm hoping it will be an iteration, but for some of you, it may be a completely new requirement to make sure you've got all of those things locked in. Now, we also need to do detailed vendor reporting for CPS 230, especially around two key areas. So the two key areas are incident management and third party risk management. And fortunately, we have something called the risk module in Gatekeeper where we can keep tabs on all risk events, live issues and things like that. We can score them, you know, using a typical risk matrix and detail the approach that we're going to take as an organization. We also have this wonderful feature called events that we're working on at the moment that could be used to help report on various live incidents and bring people together to collaborate on them in real time. Now, one thing that we often see is that we, we just mentioned it, you know, you'll probably be already be asking questions around, you know, disaster recovery, business continuity, that kind of thing. And what most of our vendors do is they provide us some documentation that details their approach. And they, they, this may be a generic approach that they take with all customers, or this may be designed solely for 
your organization really depends on the type of contract and the relationship you have. But what will happen with all of those documents over time is they go out of date. And what we need to do is spend less admin time on getting these new documents from our vendors. I've been there, I've seen it. My team used to spend half their time chasing these kind of documents. It was awful. <laughs> and what we can do instead is rely on a VCLM platform like Gatekeeper. So we've got something called a file expiry workflow. This is a best practice workflow, it takes minutes to set up. And what this does, depending on the documents you want to source from your vendor at various different frequencies, it will ask the vendor to update all of the documentation. So, so let's take a business continuity plan. This may have a shelf life of one year. The vendor would have inputted these details when they uploaded it during the onboarding phase every year your file expiry workflow is going to get that vendor to re-upload it into their vendor portal and through that portal it will then come into a workflow that you'll be able to access anyone in your team will be able to access and you'll all be able to review it approve it reject it work on it with your vendor and what this is automatically going to do right is ensure that you're keeping your information with your vendor up to date you're going to be able to prove that any internal or external auditor that you're on top of this kind of activity which is vital and ultimately it's going to lead to greater collaboration because when these documents come through you'll be able to sit down with your teams review them speak with your vendor about it make any changes that are needed and it's just going to help really drive a collaborative effort around compliance here so this is a really easy way to get way more compliant way quicker so i'm a big fan of this now, just one point on third-party risk management that I've not gone into just yet, but we have something called Market IQ, which is checks around credit checks, cyber checks, PEP sanctions, things like that, organizational structure. And with Market IQ, we're going to carry out checks 24-7, 365 days a year on all of your vendors. So we've got all of this proactive work happening around collating information, reviewing it from our vendors. But then like what happens in those gaps in between like you, we can't constantly be asking our vendors to update due diligence questions and things like that no vendor in the world is going to want to do that you you won't have the time to do it or process it or review it so with market iq it's running in the background all the time automated checks risk mitigation workflows say if a cyber incident happens their health goes down there's so much that can be done with technology and automation so Market IQ is a really powerful way to make sure that you have a high level of assurance around risk management when it comes to your vendors for CPS 230. Now, there was one requirement that really caught my eye when I was going through this regulation, and it's the point around upper regulated entities must maintain a register of information on their ICT contracts and distinguish, and this is the key part, right, and distinguish between supporting critical functions and those that do not. So we, we all do it, right? We, we typically have categories that link to all of our vendors. This comes down to an element of vendor categories and also vendor segmentation, which are normally two distinct points. But for the benefit here, we're going to really focus on the categories. So whether it's like ICT, you know, facilities management, those kind of points, right? And one thing that instantly I was thinking about is like this, this is actually not too difficult to do when you're using tech. But you know, if you're using a spreadsheet and you have got a lack of control over how you are categorizing your vendors, this could get a bit tricky. But for us, we're using technology. We've got a VCLM platform here. And straight away, I've created two new categories. That is ICT critical and ICT standard. And this is all for the purposes of CPS 230. So all of my vendors and all of those contracts that are going to support critical functions will get the ICT critical categorization and everything else will get the standard. And what we can then do is build reports for each of those to clearly give those to any auditors, to the regulators and show that, hey, we are completely on top of this. We have every category. We have clearly documented if they're supporting a critical function or not. We can see them all in one place. We can monitor these more stringently than the other ones. And it just shows I think here that you are giving a high level of assurance to your regulators, to your customers. And I know many of you have probably gone through all this 
they are scary, right? As soon as a auditor gets a whiff that you may not be doing something just right or not to a high enough standard, they start looking even more. And this is just going to shut that down. This is really going to enable you to show straight away that we're on top of this. We have a strategy. We've got these digital workflows working in the background. We've got clear categorization of these, these vendors and the contract. We can show you that we have all the relevant information in our contracts. And for any that we don't have, we're clearly working on those with our variation process. So this is really, really cool stuff. And I you know when we when we talk about compliance, it's not something to, to laugh about, to mess around with, but it is taxing on your time and attention uh, within your organization. And we really need to give it, uh, we really need to take a structured approach. And I feel like you can only do that if you have technology. Like trying to do this in spreadsheets and SharePoint and Word documents is just really going to, be a lot of noise about nothing. The auditors are just going to look at it and be like, hey, you don't actually have a system in place to do this. Like a spreadsheet really isn't a system. It's really not something you can control organizational wide. So really think about this differently. Our approach for you is going to be really useful. And what we've done here, we've actually given you an ARPA CPS 230 compliance checklist that you can download. It's in the description of this video. Make sure you click it, download it, check it out, see what you've got to <laughs> got to do beyond what I've already covered in this video. We've also got an article over on our website, link that in the description. And if you need any help with your CPS 230 requirements and you're thinking about how do we implement technology to assist us with this, we have experts based in the APAC region in Australia and New Zealand that can certainly help you with this. So get in touch below by just clicking on, I want a demo of Gatekeeper and we'll sort that out for you. But until next time, my friends, I'll see you very soon. But I just want to leave this one video here. It's all about you failed an audit, what do you do now? This is a super useful video for you. It's kind of, a, you know, a more generic, broader topic, but it's very relevant to what we're talking about here. See ya.